Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to talk about comprehensions and scoping rules and uh, some of the changes that were made in Python 3 that made comprehensions have their own scope. And then Walrus Operator came along and <laughs> kind of undid some of those benefits. And so I'm going to show you why this is and uh, kind of explain the changes that happened there. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so we're going to have to go back to Python 2 to show the original problem with this. Uh, Pay no attention to that. Apparently, I don't start Python 2 anymore for good reason. Uh, in Python 2, if you had a comprehension that had like, I don't know, y for y in range n, for instance. If you ran a comprehension like this, any variables that were assigned inside of your comprehension leaked into the outer scope. And this was a constant source of bugs. Uh, you know, sometimes you would write a list comprehension and it would clobber a local variable that happened to have the same name, uh, or you would, you know, leak a, a loop variable or all sorts of weird stuff would happen because of this. And uh, in Python 2.7, or in, I guess in Python 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, somewhere around there, they added set comprehensions and dictionary comprehensions. Those got backported to Python 2. And so they have the new scoping uh, in Python 3. So if we do Python 3, that same thing, y for y in range 10, uh, this doesn't leak a variable. And so if we look at set comprehensions in Python 2 and in Python 3, range 10, uh, you'll see that this doesn't get leaked. And this is because these were backported and have the, the new comprehension rules. And of course, this caused a whole bunch of confusion in Python 2 as well, because you know, sometimes they work this way and sometimes they work the other way. And um, I think most people agree that this behavior was, was better. It was a little bit easier to understand. Of course, it had some performance side effects. Uh, let me show you how it works in Python 3 and why it works that way. So we're going to make a little function y for y in range 10. Uh, let's just put return on the beginning of that so that we call it. We can at least get our list out. We're going to use the disassembler. I've done a few videos on this. And you'll notice that there are two code objects here. Whereas in Python 2, turn y for y in range 10. So, whereas in Python 2, we have a single code object. We don't have two code objects. And this is because comprehensions in Python 3 are actually compiled as their own special function. And then that function is called as the comprehension runs. So you can see here, this is the list comprehension. It's basically a for loop. Um, yeah, basic, basically a for loop that builds a list. And when we call our comprehension here, um, oh, I guess it takes its its um, input as a function. So you can see we call range with 10 uh, here. This is range 10. Then we grab the iterable, the iterator for range 10. And then we call the function with that one value. So this is, this is the list comprehension being called. Oh, I guess this is the setup to build the function as well. Anyway, they have their own scope, and this is all good and great and solved a, a weird set of bugs here. However, in Python 3.8, assignment expressions came along and kind of flipped this a little bit. You'll actually, actually notice there's a comprehension. There's actually a full section in the pep about simplifying list comprehensions, uh, where Walrus is proposed as a way to make list comprehensions simpler. Now let's actually take this example. Uh, in Python 3.8, of course, that's 3.7, and it will not work. Uh, this function requires f of x and input data. Uh, so let's just do uh, return x times 2, and input data being negative 1, negative 2, 0, 1, 2, or something like that. And then we have our comprehension here. So what this comprehension is doing is we're looping over input data. We are, ass we are assigning y to f of x, uh, which is just our little function here, and we are filtering if that is positive. So we should only get return results here for these two values. Uh, we should have one, two, and then one, because <laughs> it'll just accept it'll be a float, because uh, this is, so, or actually this will always be two. I don't know, whatever. Uh, so we run this, you'll notice that we have leaked this y variable. It looks a lot like the Python 2 uh, version here. And this is intentional. This is actually specced in this that the scopes should leak. Uh, scope of the target. 
Uh, so blah, blah, blah. An assignment expression does not introduce a new scope. There is one special case, an assignment expression occurring in a comprehension binds the target in the containing scope. <laughs> so we've, we've gone back to Python 2 and we are binding in the containing scope, um, which to me feels like a bit of a regression. However, it is intentional. And the reason that it is intentional is it allows you to write some clever code that has side effects, which to me is a bad idea, uh, which is another one of the reasons why I don't like the... Uh, you know, the assignment expression, it makes it a little bit, it makes it way easier to accidentally do the wrong thing. And it makes it a lot easier to write uh, way too clever code that has, that performs side effects. So personally, I don't use assignment expression. Um, <laughs> I just think this is kind of funny that we've slightly regressed our behavior back to Python 2. Um, but anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.